Warning, warning. Prepare for emergency landing. 30 years ago today, KLAS aired a live interview with an anonymous man who made some really astonishing claims. The government has been lying to you. But in this video, we will uncover some classified information, revelations into the existence of alien technology on Earth, and the alleged secret experiments being sponsored by the government. These are things the public was not supposed to know about, but thanks to whistleblowers like Bob Lazar, the veil has been removed. But who is this man? And how does he know so much about extraterrestrial activities on our planet? Join us as we take a deep dive into Bob Lazar's life and disappearance and the reason why. Who is Bob Lazar? The man, the myth, the legend, Bob Lazar, an enigma who has single-handedly held the government in a chokehold for decades, revealing secrets that officials desperately want to keep away from the public. In a world where truth is often shrouded by clouds of secrecy and cover-ups, Lazar stands as a beacon, shining his light on the mysteries that have confounded us for years. In a dramatic twist, Bob Lazar suddenly vanished four years ago, but now he's reappeared four years later, and what he has to say will definitely blow your mind. But before we get into that, let's delve into his life and history. Bob Lazar is a former U.S. scientist who rose to fame in the 1980s, owing to his revelation of the existence of extraterrestrial beings and technology on Earth. You've probably heard of Area 51, the heavily guarded military base, which is allegedly used for both housing and experimenting on alien beings and technology. Well, you should be grateful to Lazar for bringing the secrets contained within this strange location to light. But beyond the theories and revelations, Bob Lazar is a human just like every one of us. Born on January 26, 1959 in Central Gables, Florida, Bob Lazar, better known as Robert Scott Lazar, was exposed to the basic intricacies of science and technology at a young age, a factor that played a vital role much later in his life. As a child, Lazar grew up in a time when giant strides were being made in the field of science and technology. Space exploration was at its peak, and our knowledge of life beyond the shores of our planet was moving beyond speculations and assumptions to facts and figures deduced from our constant trips to outer space. Just like many young people at the time, Lazar was fascinated by the endless possibilities that exist in the world of science, and this aroused his curiosity, especially in the field of electronics and physics. Although you may have your reservations about his outlandish claims and theories, and that's fine, one thing you can't put a spot on is the remarkable amount of scientific knowledge possessed by this man. Legend has it that while Lazar was a high school student, he built a jet-powered bicycle. How amazing is that? While this invention may seem more like a novelty than a practical machine, it goes on to exemplify the depth of scientific knowledge Bob Lazar possessed even at a young age. But we've not even gotten to the most exciting part of this story. Educational Background there is a huge controversy surrounding the academic qualifications of Bob Lazar, which isn't really surprising. Every part of this man's life is a subject of debate and intense scrutiny by the general public and the authorities whose secrets he constantly seeks to expose. According to Lazar, upon completion of his high school education, he subsequently attended Pierce Junior College, Los Angeles. Propelled by his burning hunger for knowledge, Lazar took a step further in his educational pursuit and he obtained a master's degree from the acclaimed Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, where he majored in the study of physics. He also claimed to have obtained a degree in electronics from the California Institute of Technology, Caltech. But these claimed degrees have often been scrutinized and discredited by the authorities. For example, both the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology claim to have no record of Lazar. Was he a ghost student? Did he obtain these degrees under a different name? Or are these counterclaims just a massive cover-up by the government in an attempt to discredit his extraterrestrial theories? To be very honest, we do not know. To further compound the mystery surrounding his education, two revered scientists by the names of Stanton T. Friedman and Donald R. Prothero 
claimed that Lazar couldn't have studied at either of these two prestigious universities, as his high school performance record was too poor to have secured him admission into these institutions. Authorities also claim that no lecturer or fellow student from Lazar's time in the universities had any recollection of him. These claims call Lazar's academic qualifications into question. However, followers of the scientists claim that these are just laughable attempts by the government to incite a smear campaign on his person in order to alter the credibility of his claims. Regardless of the constant attacks on his person, Bob Lazar forged ahead, determined to shed light on the secret and dark experiments the government has been trying to keep from the general public for decades. Early Career Alien theories are not new. Over the years, many conspiracy theorists have come and gone, each bearing stories of flying saucers, advanced extraterrestrial technology, and spooky, unearthly creatures. So what exactly makes Bob Lazar stand out? Well, this may be due to a tiny little detail that's often left out in the media. You see, Bob Lazar isn't just some crazed E.T. enthusiast who's trying to piece coincidental events together to form a theory. Nope. Lazar knows so much because he was in the system. This man was not just an outsider trying to catch a glimpse of what was going on within the secret government's agencies. He was part of the scientists who were given the arduous task of reverse engineering alien spaceships. This means he probably knows more about all of these than many of us. So we should listen. Lazar's dedication to the pursuit of knowledge extended beyond the workplace. This curious cat built himself a standard laboratory in his home, where he conducted several experiments and studies that made him stand out as a renowned physicist in his era. Before he started tinkering with extraterrestrial machines, Bob Lazar put his knowledge of advanced physics and electronics to use at the Neutron Science Center at Los Alamos National Laboratory, where he helped experiment with one of the largest particle accelerators in the world. According to Lazar, it was at Los Alamos that his remarkable skills caught the attention of a third-party company, which saw him as a valuable tool. Lazar was also one of the pioneers of the hydrogen fuel system, discovering the potential long before the idea became mainstream. His undying thirst for knowledge, coupled with his impressive abilities, such as was displayed in his invention of a jet-propelled car that could go 200 miles per hour, made him a candidate of choice. But this was no ordinary job offer, what Lazar got was an invitation to one of the most secretive government bases known as S-4, which was located near Area 51. Area 51. This one definitely needs no introduction. It is literally the most famous military base in the world, and for strange reasons. Everybody knows Area 51, but what makes it famous is not what we know about it, but what we don't know. Here's what we know, though. Area 51 is a United States military installation located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada. According to officials, Area 51 is only used as a flight testing facility. So why is this strange location one of the most heavily guarded bases in the world? Why is there a 24-hour surveillance on Area 51 and the surrounding landscape? If this is just a flight testing site as the government claims, why is it closed to the public? What are the secrets the government is trying so hard to hide? Further deepening the mystery is the fact that all Area 51 employees access the facility by the air. They fly in and out of a secret restricted terminal at McCarran International Airport on several unmarked planes, which have been given special permission to fly through the airspace above the military base. All these and more add fuel to the flames of speculations and conspiracies surrounding Area 51. For many years, the military facility has been the subject of speculations and theories. Believers in the existence of extraterrestrial beings often claim that this base was a secret facility, specially equipped for the dissection and study of aliens and their technology. But how did Area 51 become the center point of all these wild claims? Why do people associate UFOs and extraterrestrial beings with the military base? We travel back in time to 1989 to answer these questions and more. Bob Lazar's infamous 1989 interview. If you could sit down with a man who has seen it all and done it all, a man who may likely hold the answers to all the unsolved mysteries concerning alien activities on Earth, what questions would you ask? 
On May 15, 1989, a CBS reporter by the name of George Knapp sat down with a shadowy figure named Dennis on a special KLAS-TV news report. This interview single-handedly altered the beliefs of the American people on the existence of alien technology on our planet. Several months later, Dennis turned out to be Bob Lazar, who assumed the false identity in order to protect himself. In the original interview, Lazar admitted to having been recruited for a special assignment, which required him to work on technology that couldn't have originated from our planet. According to Lazar, the alien spacecraft were stored and studied in a secret portion of Area 51, known as S-4. In order to maintain the anonymity of the location, all employees were required to gather at a facility known as EG&G, where they would then be airlifted to Groom Lake in the Nevada desert. From there, they would all be picked up in buses with blacked-out windows, or no windows at all, and transported to S-4. In the interview, Lazar admitted that he was not initially aware of the kind of machines he would be working on, but he knew it would be related to advanced propulsion technology, which he was very curious about, and in which had immense knowledge. On his first day, he was handed a brief that revealed the nature of the machines he would be working on. According to Lazar, he was astounded and couldn't believe his eyes, but he was excited nonetheless, as he understood the prospective knowledge he could gain from such an assignment. Tales of alien spacecraft were common in those days, but he never knew that these things were indeed very real. Nothing could have prepared him for the experience that awaited him at S-4. Though many of his claims were ludicrous and may have seemed hard to believe, his words ignited a fire that still burns even today. In order to confirm the credibility of his claims, Bob Lazar was subjected to several polygraph sessions, and although the results were inconclusive, experts believe that there might be an iota of truth in his wild claims. It has also been noted that the fear instilled in S-4 workers like Lazar might have played a huge role in the inconclusive results. According to Lazar, everyone who worked at S-4 was subjected to intense intimidation, and the fear of what would happen to them if they talked about the things they saw and interacted with at the base made them keep quiet. Lazar reported that there were times when his superior officer would hold him at gunpoint, threatening fire and brimstone if he or any one of the working staff exposed the reality of what they were doing in Area 51 to the world. Even residents of communities close to the military base were restricted from divulging any unexplainable phenomenon they had witnessed. But Lazar couldn't hold it in, he had to tell the world, because he felt that the American people were being unduly cheated and constantly lied to, and that didn't sit well with him. So what fascinating things did Bob Lazar see in S-4? What you are about to see might be unbelievable, but try to keep an open mind. Flying Saucers Everyone is familiar with the popular depictions of alien spacecraft. Hollywood sci-fi blockbusters like Star Wars and Guardian of the Galaxy have ingrained in our minds the concept of what an alien spaceship should look like. But does this popularized concept bear any semblance to the real thing? Well, you'll be the judge of that. According to Lazar, S-4 was teeming with alien technology. The most astounding of them were the flying saucers, or flying disks, which he claimed to have worked on himself. According to Lazar, the first time he saw one of these machines, he was floored beyond words. If he had words, he couldn't speak them anyway, as he was instructed to keep his mouth shut throughout the exhibition. Lazar reported that there were about nine of these flying saucers, their unusual shape incomparable to any advanced aircraft humans have ever invented. Each one of these spaceships was also different from the other, in design and functionality. Some of these alleged spaceships were in good condition, and according to Bob Lazar, he even saw some of them actually fly. His job, however, was not to fly these machines. That part was left to the aliens. What he was tasked with was the reverse engineering of these machines. The aim was to take apart these saucers in order to understand the technology that made them function, the power source, the secrets of their unique design, and of course how to build them. This was necessary because apparently these machines came without an instruction manual, and even if they did, no one would be able to decipher the alien language they would be written in. This task proved to be very difficult, because as advanced as our technology is on Earth, 
these seemingly simple saucers surpassed them a million times. According to Lazar, working on the alien flying saucers was unlike anything he had ever done in his life. His area of specialization was focused on the propulsion system that powered the saucers. Due to his advanced knowledge in the field, authorities at the facility directed him to study, along with other scientists, the energy source and propulsion system that made the disks fly. The unique design of the spaceship made this incredibly hard. On the outside, the alien disks had no obvious appendages that could contribute to its motion. Unlike human aircraft that are designed with wings and jet engines, these saucers seemed to just float in the air without any help from any source. The task was to find out what propelled the machines and the mechanism of their operation. Lazar, however, admitted that he had no idea how the government was able to lay their hands on such advanced machinery. However, conspiracy theorists believe that these saucers may have been recovered from the many UFO crashes that have occurred throughout history. Cases of UFO Crash If you were an alien flying through the Earth's atmosphere, chances are you might not really want to drop by and say hi because humans are known to have a terrible reputation with dealing with things they don't understand. But sometimes, for reasons unknown to us, unidentified flying objects can crash onto the surface of the Earth. Like the incident in Aurora, Texas on April 17, 1897. According to locals, a UFO was said to have crashed on a farm on the property of a judge by the name J.S. Proctor after it was hit by a windmill. On closer inspection, it was revealed that the machine was nothing like we had ever seen before. The pilot itself did not look human and was even described as a Martian, according to a report by Army Signal Officer T.J. Weems. The distressing part of this story, however, was that the alleged alien pilot didn't survive the crash and was buried at the nearby Aurora Cemetery. So what happened to the wreckage of the crash? Apparently, it was also buried in a nearby well, which was subsequently sealed up, so no one could access it in order to confirm whether the story was true or just another hoax. Another interesting report of a UFO crash occurred way back in 1884, when a group of cowboys discovered a long, cylindrical object in Dundee County, Nebraska, after a meteor crash. You should, however, know that the story was revealed to be a hoax in 1927 by the Nebraska State Journal editors where it was first published. Regardless, many people hold on to claims that the sighting was legitimate. Whether the saucers Lazar saw were from any of these crashes remains a subject of wild speculations. Antimatter Reactor and Element 115 Here's the most interesting part of this story. While working in S4, Bob Lazar claimed that he had observed an interesting phenomenon that the government had been trying to replicate for years. The flying saucers, which he and his colleagues at the secret facility worked on, were powered by an antimatter reactor, which functioned as the propulsion system. This unearthly system utilizes gravity amplification in order to propel the spacecraft. This explains why the alien spacecraft levitated above the ground. But here's where things get a little bit crazy. You see, the idea of utilizing antimatter as a fuel source in engine propulsion isn't a new concept. For many years, humans have been exploring the possibility of equipping spacecraft with antimatter-based propulsion in order to aid our exploration of other planets, especially those outside of our planets. But our efforts have often been met with failure. The existence of this powerful concept was first confirmed in 1932 by Carl Anderson, the same scientist who discovered positrons, which are electrons that exhibit a positive charge instead of a negative one. Could it be that our extraterrestrial neighbors have cracked the code of applying the antimatter concept to the designs of their spaceships? Lazar seemed to think so. According to him, the antimatter propulsion system was one of the features that made these flying saucers exceptional. But that's still not the most exciting part of his discovery. Lazar also identified the fuel source of the saucers as Element 115, which he claims does not occur naturally on Earth, but is probably very abundant on the alien planet. Everyone thought he was crazy, but then, in 2003, Russian scientists were able to manually craft this powerful element using a particle accelerator. Yuri Oganessian, 
a Russian nuclear physicist, led the team of scientists who made this astounding breakthrough at the Flerov Laboratory for Nuclear Reactions. In order to create this element, the scientists accelerated ions of calcium-40 right to around 10% of the speed of light. The ions were then bombarded with americium-243. This bombardment resulted in the fusion of the nuclei of the two atoms, producing four atoms of element 115, known as Moscovium. While the development of the element has not reached a practical application stage, the discovery lends credibility to Lazar's claim. He claimed that the government was working round the clock in a bid to understand how the system worked, and how we could harness the system to create advanced weapons, aircraft, and other revolutionary inventions. The Secret Underground Network Another wild discovery made by Bob Lazar was the existence of secret undeveloped tunnels interconnected between countries. These tunnels are believed to span many nations, perfectly tucked under mountains, military bases, oceans, and lakes. These tunnels are even believed to lead to other planets and are used and controlled by extraterrestrial beings. According to these claims, the tunnels are used to hide secret weapons, banned experiments, alien activities, and the wildest of them all. Plan a new world order. There are also claims of a super-fast transportation system that can effectively transport objects and personnel across nations and even planets within very short periods. Bob Lazar's Disappearance It is unclear why Lazar vanished for four years, although there are many speculations. Many people claim that he was likely abducted by aliens, while others attribute his disappearance to the government who sought to silence him because apparently he knew too much. But no one knows exactly what happened to him, nor is he willing to tell. But now that he is back, he has a lot on his mind. And even though the world may have doubted him in 1989, our ears are open now, and we are listening. Now it's time for the subscriber's pick. Imagine vanishing from society only to come back and everyone believes you now. Imagine the shock on your face as you realize that the truth you've been propagating alone is now mainstream and the world is ready to listen to your story again. Imagine being able to look your naysayers in the eye and tell them, I told you so. For years, the accounts of Bob Lazar were met with ridicule and skepticism, but with the recent revelations in the congressional hearings on the existence of UAPs, many other former government officials have come out of their shells to share their own experiences. These recent claims serve as corroborative evidence for Lazar's theories. Do these claims convince you that aliens are real? Let us know in the comments. Other Witnesses while it may seem like Bob Lazar is a lone ranger trying to get the world to wake up to the reality of the existence of extraterrestrial technology on our planet, this is far from the truth. Many other people have come forward with claims and theories that corroborate Lazar's claims. These are not people of questionable characters or origin, but former government employees who claim to have observed or participated in research and experiments on alien technology, just like Bob Lazar did. In recent times, Many of them have come forward with their own stories and theories at the United States Congressional Hearing on UFOs, now officially known as UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. This hearing is the first of its kind in a very long time, and it has revealed some of the most captivating secrets of the United States government. This includes possession of unearthly biological matter, non-human technology, and evidence of UAP sightings shielded from the public. Many former government employees who served in classified government agencies have come forward with claims, each one stranger than the next, but similar in details. Are you sure you're ready for what you're about to see? David Grush's Confession Who better to expose the secrets of the U.S. government than a former top official? Just like Lazar, David Grush, a former U.S. intelligence official, worked in a secret government facility doing the most unimaginable things. According to his report, Grush led Defense Department efforts to analyze reported UAP sightings and was enlisted in a multi-decade Pentagon program that sought to collect and reconstruct crashed alien spacecraft. 
When Representative Jared Moskowitz tried to make an inquiry about the source of funding for the project, Grush claimed that the experiments were above congressional oversight, which is an official way of saying the question was above your pay grade. Grush also claimed that even though he had not personally spotted a UAP, he had heard reports from colleagues who were injured by these spaceships. He also alleged that he had interviewed several of his colleagues who claimed to have recovered non-human biologics or simply put alien specimens from these crash sites. Once again, when asked to divulge specific details about these claims, he refused to speak further, citing that the information was too sensitive for public consumption. If you thought his story was wild, you should see what comes next. Ryan Graves This former Navy pilot had a slightly different report to give. According to Ryan Graves, military pilots are often inadequately prepared for these UAP sightings. This is mainly because UAPs do not officially exist, so acknowledging them was not accepted. He also advocated for more transparency to be imbibed into the process of reporting UAP sightings for both military and commercial pilots. According to Graves, many commercial airline pilots have cited UAPs too, but due to the stigma associated with such claims, many do not come forward with their findings. He proposed that a safer and more accepting environment be created in order to encourage many who encounter these unexplainable phenomena to come forward with their reports. David Fravor's UAP Encounter Perhaps the scariest of all these claims is the report given by David Fravor, a former Navy commander. According to him, he and three fellow pilots had spotted a tic-tac-shaped object hovering below their jets, just above the Pacific Ocean in 2004. As he descended to inspect the unusual object, which looked nothing like any advanced aircraft made by man, he noticed that the aircraft had no visible rotors, wings, or exhaust. Suddenly, the UAP started ascending towards his fighter jet. Fear gripped him, as he did not know what such a machine was capable of. Fortunately, the UAP vanished with supersonic speed before making contact, only to reappear after just a few seconds, but this time it was spotted about 60 miles away. Fravor claimed that what he and his team saw was undoubtedly a UAP, and it defied any logical explanation. However, many skeptics have tried to punch holes in these reports. Some claim that these were probably advanced aircraft being secretly developed by the United States Navy, while others on the wild side allege that the stories were falsified and the officials were just spinning tales. Regardless of this widespread unbelief, these claims further corroborate the reports given by Bob Lazar. Who knows, maybe someday soon, the government will come clean and show the public what they have been hiding in Area 51 and other clandestine locations worldwide. Till then, our fingers remain crossed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.